Howdy ho, you handsome hunk. Grab a snack and gain some chunk. If your day is great or really sunk, we hope to help you shake the funk. So if you're good to hear some junk, buckle up, it's the Junk Monk Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Junk Monk Podcast. I'm your host, Candace Sloan, who you know from Instagram, at Hardens and Hard Ads. And I'm Noah, your co-host, you know from right now. If this is your first time listening, let us fill you in. We are watching and reviewing every episode of the USA hit TV show, mm-hmm. Monk, right here each week. And we are going to do so while eating a little bit of junk. So I've got my junk food here, which is some, like, vanilla tiny Reese's cups. What are these called? Yeah, they're, oh, they're white chocolate. White chocolate. Yeah. Why did I think vanilla? vanilla. I don't know. <laughs> vanilla Reese's cups. Well, they were part of the hot chocolate bar. So mm-hmm. they're not in the package. So. Yeah, it's they're a in a very confusing. fancy jar. Yeah. We go all out for the hot cocoa bar here. <laughs> we have everything. And I have some, uh, they're actually great value, but they're potato chips. They're like the Wavy Lays, but they're queso flavored. They're actually really good. I'm I'm full right now, and this was the only thing that I was like, I could, I could eat, eat that. <laughs> I could eat that. Best kind of snack. Same with this. This... I love Reese's Cups. I don't know. Yeah, we bought those for you, so I knew you'd like those. I just... Yeah. Beautiful. Always. Also, you must know, I've seen every episode of Monk. I'm a huge fan, started watching in 2007, and for the most part, watched it as it aired. I have seen seasons one and two, and those we've done on the show, and a few scattered here and there in different seasons. So, if you're ready to start the show, Toby, take it away. Here's what happened. Okay, guys, this is... Mr. Monk and the UFO, Season 8, Episode 3. So here's what happened. In the opening scene, we see Natalie and Mr. Monk on their way back from a weekend trip. Suddenly, Natalie's car breaks down, and as Monk is helping fix the car, he sees an unidentified flying object in the sky. After they open, we see the two stranded in a small desert town, waiting for their car to be repaired. During their stay, they learn of a missing girl and witness another UFO sighting. Now everyone believes Monk except for Monk as he knows there is another explanation. UFO fans now worship Adrian as the Alpha Contact and they all scour the landing site where they discover the missing girl dead and scavenged by animals. However, Monk notices her clothes are brand new and her body has been dressed to appear as if she was hiking. They go to question her brother, Kyle Larkin. He seems innocent enough. However, when Monk visits the crime scene one more time, he finds some of Kyle's belongings, including some that could be used to make a model airplane or a UFO. It turns out that Kyle had killed his sister for inheritance money and tried to stage a hiking accident in the desert. But when her body was carried away by animals, no one found her, which meant he couldn't claim the money. So he created the UFO illusion in order to have people search the area. It worked until, of course, Monk solves the case and returns to his home planet of San Francisco. (laughs) All right. So that was Mr. Monk and the UFO. What did you like about this episode? Okay. I feel like I have a lot of quotes. So. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. First, we have the captain and Natalie. They both think that Monk may be an alien, which is hilarious. (laughs) Because in the first scene, we see Monk and Natalie driving in the car together. And she's like, what are you, even human? You know what? That would explain a lot. It wouldn't explain everything, but it would explain a lot. And then Natalie calls the captain and she's like, hey, you know, we're stranded here. We're not going to be able to make it, you know, back to San Francisco. And uh, she says, you know, Monk saw a UFO. And then the captain says something along the lines like, maybe he's an alien. And Natalie's like, that's what I said. And he's like, that would explain a lot, actually. Maybe they're coming to take him home. And she's like... <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> it was funny. Um, my first like is also a quote. Because Monk is like, Monk is like, no, I didn't see a UFO. The, but I to saw the sheriff. Something. Yeah. To the sheriff, yeah. To the sheriff. He's like, I didn't see a UFO, but I, I saw something. And he's like, so it was an object. Yeah. It was unidentifiable. Yeah. It was flying. Mm-hmm. Son, you got yourself a UFO. <laughs> <laughs> That was funny. I like the sheriff. He, I liked him too. He's he, very laid back. He's another like. Also, um, when he gets shot, he's like a total heart oh, And yeah. like, of course, Monk is a whiny baby. <laughs> but he, the sheriff just like wraps himself up and he's like, all right, let's keep going. So I did like the sheriff, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, we have the internet people. All of these crazy UFO alien fans yeah. all come swarm Mr. Monk. And that was a like. Well, it was a, like the the part where they they think like, oh, he's the alpha contact and they're all hanging mm-hmm. out at the landing site. 
And Monk is like, wipe. And they're like, what? What is he doing? And she's like, <laughs> Natalie's like, oh yeah, he just he just doesn't like germs. And they're like, whose germs? <laughs> and like, and no, just just anybody's germs. Has anybody noticed this guy's not sweating? <laughs> yeah, I noticed that too. And he's like, no, I just I just don't sweat. It's like a glandular thing. <laughs> and they're like, show us your belly button. <laughs> he's like, I will not. <laughs> The entire episode, everyone's asking to see his belly button. <laughs> I know. Okay, my next like is Monk versus the Supernatural. I think this is an interesting idea. I mean, it obviously wasn't versus the su- Supernatural. I, are aliens supernatural? Um, I I guess. Because they're... Just like something that's Monk versus hmm. like fictional things. Yeah. Because, like, I would say, you know, like, a ghost is supernatural. Yeah. Because it's, like, on our planet, but it's higher being than us. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you, if an alien, because it is supernatural to us. Hmm. Huh. That's interesting. Anyways. I, I, good, I think, good question. Good question. Yeah. I think um, Monk versus, like, not even, like, Monk versus the genius or someone who's very, very, like, smart or cunning or whatever. Monk versus... Aliens is so cool. I mean, he wasn't against it, but he wasn't actually against aliens or anything in this episode. Well, he was, I mean, he was definitely skeptical. Like, when he saw it, he was like, what the heck? And then he was like, no, there's an explanation. Like, there's an explanation. And then Natalie's like, she doesn't believe it either, because she's like, Mr. Monk, you know, it's okay to have your eyes checked. Everyone needs their eyes checked. And he's like, I know what I saw. But mm-hmm. I, I know that's not what I saw, but I know what I saw looked like a UFO, yeah. but I know it wasn't. So he is against it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he's he's against, you know, it being true. He's, yeah. he's disproving it. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I like the fact that Natalie took Monk on her weekend trip. I thought that was cool. Mm-hmm. Like, they were doing, like, friend things together. Yeah. I thought that was sweet, just in a general sense. I also have whenever, so this is when we see Boom Boom. Right? Mm, yes. He's the mechanic. And Monk is very, like, turned off by his, pers- you know, his persona, his, mm-hmm. like, gruffiness, his odor, his intelligence. All this stuff that Monk probably is just completely inferring, right? Yeah. And Natalie's like, Mr. Monk, for one, he's charging us more because of you're being rude to him. And for two, like, why don't you just put yourself in his shoes? And so Boom Boom has, he's walked away, right? He's coming back and he's walking up behind Natalie and Monk. And Monk is like, okay, be him. Okay. Okay, I can do it. Oh God, I need to go take a shower (laughs) and finish high school. (laughs) (laughs) It was so mean. And of course, Boom Boom's standing right behind him. So, yeah. Um, I love Monk being super dramatic in the desert. I, oh, I feel like they do that all the time in movies, and I was totally expecting it, and it was still funny. When he's like, <sighs> and he's they, like they 20 feet so, away. It was so dramatic, though. Like, he was so, like, yeah. oh, God, I don't know how much longer I can make it. And you're just like, I wonder how long he's been out there. Man, that sucks. And mm-hmm. then she's like, You can do it, Mr. Monk. <laughs> just keep going. And, and he falls to the ground, and then he stands back up, and he's like, Oh, God, my hands are dirty. And so he uses his water to wash his hands off. <laughs> like, Mr. Monk, that's all the water you have. Don't use it all. And he's like, dirt. So much dirt. Oh, my gosh, it's funny. I also wrote down Monk's emergency plan. So the, the sheriff gets shot. Mm-hmm. And they're like, we need to go for help. And Monk's like, okay, Natalie and I will go get help. And Natalie's like, we, Mr. Monk, we can't leave him. He's been shot. It's like, okay, Natalie and I will stay here. And you go get help. I'm like, Mr. Monk, he can't walk. <laughs> well, what do you suggest, Natalie? Do you have any ideas at all? And she's like, yeah, you go get help. And I stay here with the sheriff and take care of him. Any ideas at all? <laughs> no? None? Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> and then, of course, that's when he goes on his way. And he uses all the water. And Oh, my gosh. That's so funny. Why? Who shot the sheriff? The brother, right? Yeah. But why? So, yeah, I, I when I was going over the synopsis, I had to re-watch all of this, actually. Oh, wow. So, what happened was the brother wanted the sister dead. So, whenever Monk goes to that guy's house, Monk basically says, oh, yeah, well, we think your sister was murdered. 
And he, remember, Kyle had set it up to where it was supposed to look like his sister had an accident. Mm-hmm. So once he knows, the police think that he, or not that he, but that his sister was murdered. He's like, oh, crap. Like, I need to finish these people off. Uh-huh. Like, he's basically trying to kill them because Monk thinks that his sister was murdered. So as soon as they leave, they go, that's where they go is to the crime scene. And so Kyle follows them there oh. and tries to kill them. Yeah. Cause he shoots at them, wow. shoots out the tire so they can't leave. So that even if he doesn't kill them by shooting them, that they'll die in the desert. But yeah, that's, that's why that's, that's oh. who shot them and why I had to go back and watch that too. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like that was just an excuse to get monk in the desert by himself. I think it was more of like the brother was very out of left field, kind of, mm-hmm. sort of to speak. Like he wasn't a huge like suspect in your mind. So the fact that like immediately after they're getting shot at, it's still like at least to me it wasn't super obvious that it was the brother. Yeah, you know what I mean. Where in other other cases, you know, you see Brad Garrett pop on on the screen, and you're like, oh, he's the guy. Oh, they're getting shot at. So Brad Garrett's obviously shooting at him, but. It, the brother was, like, so low-key that yeah. you didn't think of it. And then you even wonder, who was shooting at them? Yeah. So, I didn't. I honestly didn't hate that because I, I did like that the brother was low-key. That he wasn't a super obvious suspect. Yeah. So. I think I'm done with likes. Oh. you have a lot more? Um, No, not a lot more. Just a few more quotes. So, we have Natalie at the end. She's searching for his belly button. Mm-hmm. And he's like, he's up on the cabinets and he's cleaning them. And she's like, oh, are you still cleaning? And he's like, yeah. And she's like, you've been doing that for like three hours. And he's like, yeah, I know. And she's like, okay. She like kind of pokes at his shirt a little bit. And he's like, Natalie, what are you doing? Are you trying to look at my belly button? And she's like, well, Mr. Monk, I mean, I've been having some crazy dreams. Like, I don't know. You might be, I don't know. I don't know. And he's like, Natalie, I'm not from outer space. And she's like, I know, Mr. Monk, I know. And he's like, I'm as human as any other thing in this room. And she's like, see? That kind of stuff. <laughs> the way you said that, that's so weird. And then and then she tries to see his belly button again. She's like, let me see. And he's like, no. And he runs into the bathroom. And then he shuts the door. And then she's like, Mr. Monk, come on. Let me see. Is it an any or an Audi? And then he like cracks no, the she door said, she open. Says, Is it because it's an, an Audi or something? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then do you remember what he says when he cracks he cracks the door back open? No, I don't. He says something like, leave me alone or I'll destroy your planet. Oh, yeah, like yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't, I didn't get the exact quote. I actually like the belly button thing. I thought, yeah. that, I thought that was funny. That is so cute, yeah. <laughs> and then I have, let's see. So this, this next one is actually whenever they're at Kyle Larkin's house and they all go to the window and they see all the internet people outside yeah. for, for Monk. And Natalie's like, yeah. They think Mr. Monk is from outer space and they all turn around and Monk is like pointing at this little statue and he's like twitching out. And she's like, (laughs) he's not. (laughs) That was a really good line. And then of course we have the, the scene where Monk wakes up and he's, he, he, he wakes up in the sleep in hotel and he wakes up and he rubs his eyes and he walks to the window and opens the window and there's just, an alien, just some dude dressed in a green mm-hmm. leotard. And Monk's like, okay. And then he closes <laughs> the window, gets back in bed, and then he turns off the light. He turns back off the light. So he's waking up again. He's like, <laughs> all right, let's do a redo. And then he wakes up and he opens the curtain and there's like three aliens just standing there staring at him. And he's like, okay. Like, it's just so, it's one of those like drawn out scenes where, it's not, it's like, it's kind of the same thing over and over again, you know, like mm-hmm. where you're like just standing here, like watching him in a porta potty, you know, yeah. where it's just like a still shot. But I thought like this was funnier because whenever he opens it, there's like more people there. I, yeah. I, I felt like that one like simmered a lot better mm-hmm. than some of the other like really long shots they do where it's like, shh, 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 yeah. shh. It, you know, it's like, it was different because there was more aliens. And so I liked, I liked that scene. Oh, at first glance, I thought that was a real alien. The first time he opened it. Yeah. And, but the second time, the other, like, two people who were with them were super fake. So I was like, Whew. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did, too. I actually remember that scene the very first time I saw this episode. I remember mm-hmm. thinking, like, what the? 
And then, you know, not be like, what the heck yeah. was that? Because that guy, they got like this alien-y looking guy with a tiny head and his face was painted green and everything. Yeah. It was like, well, because also like, yeah, it was a person, but it was like, was it supposed to be an alien? Yeah. You know what I mean, like, I don't, yeah. I don't know. We always talk about their bad CGI. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, was it supposed to be an alien? I don't know. <laughs> okay. My last thing is Monk at the very end when he's going to meet his, his, earthling followers and he's walking out of the sleep in and it's like slow motion oh yeah and like, they're like like astronaut movies <laughs> yes ast- exactly and he walks up to all the people and he's super nice and he lets them down really easily and natalie's like mr monk that's the nicest thing he's like you've ever seen anyone do and she's like no that i've ever seen you do but it was still really nice <laughs> and she gives him a hug and then monk like turns back around and all the people are still s- staring at him and he's like uh what and they're like we're not buying it you're an alien show us your belly button and he's like okay earth people of the net you're right i am not human i traveled here to your how do you say planet on a class four intergalactic doom freighter (laughs) The lady's like, I knew it. (laughs) I was sent here to observe and probe (laughs) and do alien things to everyone. And then he, this is when he starts like observe and he puts his little hands up, his monk hands. And then everyone's like, oh, and he puts them all. (laughs) And Natalie's doing it too. And they're wiggling their fingers. Oh my gosh. That was funny. That was that was really funny. I like that part a lot. And I'm done. Okay. Candace, what did you dis like about this episode? Okay, this is probably my biggest dislike. Where's Jason? Our boy J Dog. This literally is the first episode we've watched since we had our interview. Mm-hmm. And this is the first episode. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong, that Jason Gray Stanford has not been in Ever. What? I do not recall him not being in any other episode. Usually whenever like the captain and Randy aren't in an episode, usually Randy is there and the captain is the one that's missing. I can't think of any other episode that okay. Randy is I'm not gonna in. I'm going to look up his IMDb. It's going to credit him for all the episodes because it does the same thing for Ted Levine, I'm pretty sure. No it's, way. Yeah, they're going to show that they're in all the episodes because they're credited in all of the episodes. You know what I mean? That's crazy. Yeah, because they're on the credits. They don't, they don't, t- they don't not give people credit because they were missing from an episode. Uh-huh. Because they're on the cast. So, yeah. But someone please let me know because that was wow. pretty like, we were like, oh my gosh, we're going to get to watch him. Like we've met him, you know, like uh-huh. we've met him since then. So we're like, oh, this is going to be cool. Nowhere to be found. The yeah. captain has a tiny scene, but Randy's not in there. What the crap? What's your first dislike? Me primero dislike. Oh is... yeah, that one time you said you said you were you were like I'm Noah who's bilingual. Toby oh, yeah. was like, no, he's not. <laughs> he totally called you out. <laughs> just to, just so everyone's clear. <laughs> No, he is not. Uh, uh, my first dislike is Julie borrowed the car to move furniture. Yeah. How old is she? <laughs> I will never have a shot, guys. <laughs> I've given up. That seems smart. I can't believe I this. She's <laughs> just slowly She's going out of grasp. me, guys. <laughs> At uh, least she didn't say she was, like, moving to her boyfriend's house. Well, her furniture. Yeah, but well, that's implied, Candace. Whoa. It is? Okay. No? Hmm. You know what? I actually do wonder where she was moving furniture, unless she was just moving furniture, like, into her own house, like, with Natalie, because she's still in high school at this point. So, or like, she has a plot hole. Yeah, it could be a plot hole later on once we see where Julie is at. So we'll keep an eye on that. They could she could have just been like Julie was on a road trip with her friends or something, and and I wanted her to take this car, or like my good car instead of the crappy car. Yeah, yeah. that's true. 
Okay, my first one was Angry Natalie. I completely understand where she was coming from. She was mad that Monk was, like, being a super weirdo, like, at her, like, with her friends or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's also just, it was just kind of aggressive. Because she was like, you were embarrassing, Mr. Monk. It was embarrassing. I'm like, oh, gosh. Like, it was just a little harsh. Like, when she, and I I guess it's, like, it's hard to tell because, like, if Monk is more, like, like, we know he's awkward, but if he was just being abnormally awkward, like, super, super, like, Mm -hmm. No, you didn't say one single word. Because, I mean, like like I said, I understand because of all the stuff she said he was doing. Like, you were just sitting there rearranging spoons <laughs> and plates. And you didn't say anything. So, I just I just didn't like Natalie that, that she was mad at him, basically. Not like she wasn't justified in being mad. I just didn't like that she was so angry at him. Like, I feel like that could have worked into the episode. Uh, like the episode wasn't about her being mad. Yeah. They were trying to get the line out of her that he wasn't human. And there could have come up with another way to do that besides her being angry at him. I think I, I thought the episode kind of revolved around that around him not being nice enough to people like, or like being normal. Cause like the whole scene with boom, boom, like I think I have uh, my, my dislikes, I think that makes sense. Um, I guess I wish, I guess, uh, no, that, it is a good point, but again. Monk was acting, was not acting good at Natalie's, at Natalie's event. What was it? Yeah. A wedding or whatever. She just said it was her oldest friend. That's all she said. Her, like her event or whatever. And Natalie tells him and he still is rude to Boom Boom. Mm Mm-hmm. And it's like, what the crap? Yeah. And then everyone treats him weird. Yeah. And I, I guess it's like learning his lesson kind of or something. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But there was definitely a thing with Monk just being rude to people this yeah. episode. That's true. Yeah. I actually put my next one is another Monk insulting someone's intelligence. Mm-hmm. Because I know it's not like super close, but like in the season finale, when he we have the adult, 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 adult. Oh, yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. And this one's worse because she was actually stupid. Boom Boom wasn't stupid. Boom Boom wasn't stupid. He was fixing the car and he just starts insulting, like, his intelligence. And he's like, you're car smart. And he's like, oh, I'm car smart. And it's like, Monk, like, I thought the adult thing was really funny. This was less funny, how he was treating him. It was cringy. Yeah. Because you know that everything is riding on him, you know, helping them and monk being rude is just so heartbreaking to see it's just like oh that hurts oh that hurts yeah and then that was also another which i didn't write it down but it did make me it kind of ties into that the whole like trapped feeling like they're never going to make it to the game yeah like you know monk is digging this hole where they're never going to be able to get out of this town (laughs) because he's being mean yeah and it's completely within his control just like it was in the playoffs like all monk had to do was go to the game it was in his control but He's doing it, so it was it was. This isn't even like the playoffs, even because it's like the playoffs was because of his conscience. This is because he's just rude. Yeah, for no reason. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> My dislike is internet people. They call them internet people. Uh huh. Those people are, are weird. <laughs> Us internet people. What? No. Oh my gosh! Really? No. This was like in two thousand and nine. Okay. Like where the and bec- the internet has changed. Like because and. used to if you stayed and you spent all day on the internet looking at conspiracy theories and all that stuff, you were a loser or a nerd or mm-hmm. whatever. Like now people that's literally like what they do on their lunch break while they're at work, watch YouTube videos about conspiracy theories or <laughs> you know, anything. Like ever like the, the world is at your fingertips via the internet yeah whereas like there's now an internet person is like that's abnormal there's there's no that the the norm is internet people the abnormal thing is like not having a smartphone yeah so then it was it was just the opposite but it, i thought it was funny internet people um <laughs> my next one is this episode was kind of slow mm-hmm. we didn't have a lot going on i don't even really i don't really know how to uh, elaborate on that honestly it was just i i don't like when things are set in not deserts but weird like yeah. desert towns yes mm-hmm. it makes me feel trapped yes 
I don't like exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's boring. It makes because they go for like western and western slow, yeah. And then it's boring, and then you feel trapped. Yeah. And I don't like yeah. any of that. Well, there you go. You elaborated on that. Thank you. For me. Perfect. Do you have any more? I don't. Okay, so I have one more, which is, it's kind of a big one. I started jotting down a bunch of notes next to it. So I put that the crime was actually kind of weak. Mm-hmm. I thought, I did think it was realistic, however. Like, oh, really? Because, well, I watch a lot of murder shows. We know this. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of times where the murderers have to put the body where that can be found so that they can collect their insurance money. Yeah. So there's a lot of things like that. So I thought that that was realistic, but not super interesting. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it's it's like, if you're watching a 2020 episode, that's interesting. If you're watching a fictional crime show, that's not, not interesting. interesting. You want something yeah. more outlandish. So that was part of it. Um, and the fact that they set you up for aliens and then... Hey, it's weird guy. I mean, you obviously weren't expecting aliens. Yeah, I know. That's tough. But they could have given us a little little more. more. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. And then also I put like, it gave, you already kind of said this, like the desert vibes, but it reminded me of Bumps' head where he's in Mm. a town like that. Yeah. And also tying it back into the crime that nobody cares about the crime. Do you remember what the crime was in Bumps' head? I do not. It's... it's about, because, you know, M- Monk bumps his head. Mm-hmm. Lori Metcalf is the crazy girl who makes him think that sh- they're oh, yeah. married. And the crime is a hit and run where the guy drives through the fence and he gets stung by the bees. And he did it on purpose because he knew that the girl where he dumped her body, the bees had stung him. And so he would, he, everyone would know that he was at the murder site because, because he was stung bees. by bees. So he drives through the... The fence, so he gets stung by more bees, and then Monk puts that together. It's very like you don't care about that crime. You, you only care about Monk having amnesia. And I feel like this is the same. You only cared about the UFO and the alien aspect and not about the crime at all, the missing girl, mm-hmm. which again makes it even worse than Bumps' head because, like you just said, they didn't give us enough alien. Yeah. If they had gone more towards that direction of alien, mm-hmm. they could have made it more interesting. Yeah. Like if he had found something that like, something more that like proved like, no, this type of goo is like actually alien. You know what I mean? It's foreign or something, you know? They just needed to go a little bit further yeah. to con- to intertwine the alien thing, mm-hmm. I think. I so. It just... Monk is b- becoming more of a show that depends on, or that's trying to go towards comedy, but they forget that they depend so much on the crime and they have to do it. So they're just like, we'll stick anything in there just so we can do this alien thing because mm-hmm. we think it's funny. Yeah. That's what I think is happening. That's, I mean, that, that could be valid. Like once you get, you know, it's easier to come up with monk adventures that haven't been seen it's probably a lot harder to come up with crimes Crimes, that haven't been seen or done in some form or fashion so i I couldn't do it i'll tell you that i mean the ufo could have been anything like that crime was so lame like you know i needed someone to go out there so i drove my car into a like tree or something it could have been anything Mm -hmm. at all Mm -hmm. and they chose ufo because they wanted monk to be in the situation yeah exactly Yep. All right. I thought it was a good dislike. That was a good, was a good one. We got real philosophical again. I like it. Okay, next one is? He's, He's the guy. guy. I have a few. Okay, and I have one that you have, I know. And then wow. one that hopefully you don't have. But I have I'm... two Eric's. Okay. So first is Boom Boom. Mm-hmm. A.K.A. Cameron from Modern Family. Mm-hmm. A.K.A. Eric Stoke Street. Yeah. So we talked about Modern Family a few weeks ago. And we did. I thought this was interesting because he's on. Yeah. Well, and, I mean, Julie Bowen was on. Uh, the twin episode. Which one was that? Yeah. So that was Mr. Rock and the Bully. So that was mm-hmm. 714. So we're about five episodes away from each other. So not. Wow. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty close. Pretty close. And my next one is Eric Land. Oh, actually, sorry. Let me cut. So, obviously, I have Eric Stone Tree as well. Oh, okay. Right? But I did, I made a small connection, not not 
big, small connection. On Modern Family, his clown name is Fizbo. Fizbo the clown, yeah. Yeah, and so I was like, I was watching it, and they were like, his name's Boom Boom, and I'm like, that's really close to his clown name. What's his clown name? And Toby looked it up, and he's like, it's Fizbo, and I was like, oh, Boom Boom Fizbo. <laughs> it's similar. And then also, you know, I listened to The Office Ladies, mm-hmm. and actually Brian Baumgartner has his podcast out now, The Office Deep Dive, which is really good, by the way. So they were saying on one of the, I think it was Brian's podcast that Eric Stone Street actually auditioned for the part of Kevin Malone. He was one of the people. I no think way. you might be able to find his audition tape out there. No I th- way. I think so. But yeah, he was, he was, um, Holy crap. Brian Baumgartner was chosen over him. Yeah. So that was just a little fun fact about that Eric That is Stone so Street. cool. So, okay. You go again. Okay, so my next one is Eric Lange or Lange's. I don't know. I wrote Lange and then space S. So I don't know if that's a typo or not, but that doesn't really matter. Um, he's Eric Lange, a.k.a. Erwin Psychowitz from Victorious. So in Victorious, they go to this very fancy art school and their teacher is crazy and his name is Psychowitz. Yep. And I immediately recognized him, even with his goggles and everything. Yeah, I did. I, that was a really good catch. I did recognize him, too. And I was like, yeah, it's from one of those types of shows. And then Toby looked it up and he was like, yep, it's Victorious. And you were like, yep, that's him. So, yeah. He's, he's very, yeah, distinguishable. He is, yeah. yeah. He has, the, like, the long hair. He's kind of balding at the top. Yeah. And he has, like, the long hair in the back. Yep. Do you have any more? Or? I don't know. I don't oh, okay. So we had the same amount, except for we had one of the same person. So <laughs> we're tied this time. Okay. <laughs> All right. So mine is actually Daniel uh, Daniel Stern. He played Sheriff Fletcher. I actually thought I was going to recognize him from something else. And interestingly enough, uh, someone recommended that I watch The Wonder Years because I really like Boy Meets World and his brother, like Ben Savage is Corey Matthews. Yeah. And then Fred Savage is Kevin Arnold. On the Wonder Years, which was like a show like in the 80s. And so someone recommended that I watch the first few episodes of the Wonder Years. I was like, okay, I'll give it a try. Well, Sheriff Fletcher is the narrator of that show. Mm -hmm. He did every single episode. So like the whole show is, you know, narrated. There's a few shows that are like that. But he, so he narrated the entire thing. And I was like, that's weird. Because I just watched the Wonder Years like Mm -hmm. a week ago or so. Like maybe the week before this so, again, I wouldn't have known him from anything except for when I looked him up, The Wonder Years. I was like, what? He totally is the narrator. I listened to his voice and I was like, yeah, that do- that does sound like him. So, that's wow. it. Wow. Yeah. Are you ready? I am ready. Junk time. Welcome back to my first time on the show where I ask Candace questions and she eats junk. Oh, man, I should have said it. Okay. Welcome back to Noah's favorite time of the show. <laughs> Wait, that's <laughs> Welcome back to my favorite time of the show where I eat junk and Noah asks me questions. What? Whoa. All right, guys. Last week, I insulted Candace or something. I don't remember how this happened, but she gave me the task of writing the junk time questions this week. So, Candace, question numero uno. Do you believe in aliens? Alien existence of some kind. Pretty pretty easy one. A pop of Reese's Pieces. What is this called? Reese's Cup. Reese's Cup. Mm. Okay. Honestly, I feel like I'm in the minority with this one. I don't know if this is true. I know I'm going to ask you guys this question on Instagram, you know, in mm-hmm. a few weeks from now. But um, I do not believe in aliens. <gasps> Yeah, I do not. Um, How dare you? I I don't I don't know if it's um I don't know if it's like a religious thing. Like I'm not like anti alien, but just the fact that like it's the Bible and stuff just talks about earth and people and stuff like that. And I've just never at least I've never been taught the Bible in a way that says like, yeah, there could be other things out there. Everything is very like this is the earth, the you know. God made the earth, you know, he made the universe, but mm. this is the, this is very specific to the earth and the people on the earth and not anything else. But again, there's, you know, people interpret the Bible in different ways or whatever. I just personally have never been taught that. Yeah. So it's just hard for me to like, think like there's another life form. Like, I mean, I guess there's, you know, animals and stuff, 
But again, that's like, that's in the Bible too. God made animals. You know what I mean? Didn't yeah. make aliens. So I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't think I, it's funny cause I wouldn't be surprised if they found them, but I don't think that they're out there. So I don't think they're going to find them in our lifetime at least. They if they a, did, that'd be dope. They have a lot of, um, what were we, wa- we were watching today, actually, the, the, the show to tell the truth. Oh yeah. And Mars connects. Yeah. One of the people was a Mars. I didn't get the, I didn't get the reference. Mars architect, like an architect, but for yeah, Mars. Yeah. This is just, I don't know what's wrong with her. Oh. And so you're stealing my chips while I'm talking uh, to me? Yeah. Cause having... you, you yammered on about them. They're almost like cheesy sour cream and onion or something. I don't know. Yeah. When I was a kid, I would never touch these with a 10-foot pole. And now... Why? I don't know. I like sour cream and onion chips, but not... I didn't like uh, ruffles. Ruffles are cracked. Or... Ruffles are the best. Or like regular potato chips or anything. I just, I liked I liked lay sour cream and onion chips. That was like my jam. And Doritos Cool Ranch. Wait, do old people know what cracked is? I do not know what that means, no. I couldn't tell if you were saying that it was bad or good. Cracked is good. Yeah, I thought it was bad. Oh, wow. Yeah. It means you're on crack. What? No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. Because you're, you're playing video games and you're like, bro, you're so cracked right now. Like, you're, like your senses are, like, heightened. Are you joking? No, I'm not joking right so now. I'm not <laughs> joking. Like, you're on crack. <laughs> that, that's the thing that people say. For all, for all our, our older folks out there. Wow. Watching. Okay. That's what crack means. It means, like, you're on crack. You're really good at video games. Like... Bro, you're cracked right now, bro. That's super weird. You did not know that? No. Neither did Toby. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. Wait, let me just confirm this before I'm... Toby's also old. <laughs> let me just confirm Andy. this before I'm just, like, completely lying to you guys. Insanely good at something. Internet gaming. Thank you. So Thank then you. chips couldn't really be cracked. Because they're not insanely good at Video games. internet games. Well... It's used in internet games, but like, yeah. whenever you're playing like, like a game like basketball or something, you're like, bro, you're cracked. <laughs> that is so weird. Because oh you're like, gosh. I don't know, bigger, better, faster, stronger. On crack, do drugs, kid. Kids, I'm probably younger than anyone ever listening to this, so people well, know we more. Have, than me. I know we have another eighth grader out there. No, we don't. Yeah, because they comment every every week on YouTube. No way. But they're in 8th grade, yeah. No way. I want to talk to them. We can talk to them whenever you want to. They're on YouTube. They're on our channel. On our comments section. They were literally asking about you the other day, like, oh, is Noah starting school? It's like, <gasps> Noah's been in school for in person since August. And they're like, oh, wow, because they're just now starting in I person. know. Everyone else is just now starting. That's crazy. Yeah. Um. Did you already answer if you believed in aliens or not? Oh, I do. I mean, it was kind of obvious. Oh, okay. I do. I just, I just don't see how they're not out there. I know sometimes though you're like, <gasps> I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't, I wasn't, I was confirming. Oh yeah. I do. I just, I feel like there's something out there. I don't know. Do you, do you feel like there's something out there or you want there to be something out there? I, a little bit of both. Cause I don't want there to be anything out there. So that's probably also part of I feel like the reluctance to believe in it. The most. I, we will find is like little baby microbes, like atoms of just alien. Yeah. Like a, what's it called? Like a, yeah, like a microbe. Like how we started out. Something like that. That So, my next question is, if you did believe in aliens, would you think that they are more or less advanced than us? Wow, that's a good one too. And that's part of the reason why I don't believe in them, I think, because it's also hard for me to believe that there's something out there that's smarter than us. I feel like we're pretty dumb. It's funny because I, I was literally talking about this with Toby the other day. I was like, man, technology is like, I feel like I give credit to like the person that invented the light bulb or, you know, something like something like that where it's like so incredibly innovative and you know, in everyday life, but like just random stuff like, I made an apple pen. And you're like, that's great. Like what specifically, like how long did it take you to make that? And for like, how much good did it do you to like make that item? Like I have an apple pen, like on the end of my hand, it's called my finger. 
You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, you made the iPad, but what's the I- Apple Pen for? Like, I don't know if that's the best example, but it's like, it's just stuff that people like, oh, Alexa, turn the lights on. And you're like, yeah, I could, I could just turn it on myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I feel like there's some things that are like, which again, it's like, yes, t- people are smart. So they make the technology for it. But also like, how many times are you like, hey, Siri, do this. I'm sorry. What was that? Hey, Siri, do this. <laughs> I'm sorry. Your series got off. <laughs> I'm not understanding you. Look, she literally said, I didn't get that. Could you try again? Like, well, no, no, no. Because she immediately read exactly what you're saying. It said it. Because you know how it says the logs. What yeah. you said. It said, hey, Siri. What? Mine just went off. <laughs> <laughs> it, said, it said, hey, Siri, what was that? It was like the logs. So it did get what you're saying. You're just stupid. Well, no. But everybody knows what I'm talking about. Where, like, we've been around the Alexa, and she's like, hey. Alexa, play the song. And then she's like, no. (laughs) Yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't understand exactly the words you were saying. (laughs) Like, yeah. So, again, like, I guess people are smart, but also they're dumb. So, yeah, to go back to your question. I don't really know. It's just hard for me to think that there's something that's, like, because they always picture them as, like, super, like, um, futuristic, you know, wearing things from the future. (laughs) Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they always make, it's like. They never show up in, like, cowboy hats and, like, the Old West. Like, yeah. it's always, like, something beyond us. It could very well be something that's, like, a caveman mm-hmm. or something that's behind us in evolution or whatever. So, I would think I would think if we're thinking microbe, though, that it would make sense that if we found something evolving, that it would be behind us, yeah. not ahead of us. I feel like we kind of answered our own question with that. Yeah. Because, like, we think we're going to find fully formed green alien beings that are smarter than us? I'd say less. I'd say less just because there's no way. Because we got insanely lucky. Unless they're, like, indestructible or something. Yeah. Then they're definitely not. Like, they're all Supermans. Yeah. (laughs) Something like that. Yeah. the planet Krypton. Yeah. Yeah. Other than that, I feel like they're going to be dumb. No matter what, I feel like they're dumb. But if we do find them, possibly they are super powered or they can fly or something or they can like not get hurt or regenerate really fast. Or I don't know. I'm normal. Yeah. Supernatural. I'm telling you guys. But are they supernatural? I don't know. <laughs> that, that discussion again. Okay. Uh, do you have a third question? I do have a third question. Okay. And it is actually crime related. So if I was worth a lot of money... And you were to inherit it if I die. <laughs> would you kill me? You, what kind of question is that? Would you? If I would, I wouldn't say it on this podcast. I'll Ooh. tell you that right now. They're uh, coming to look for me if you die first. I'm like, yeah, sure. If it was enough money. <laughs> like, no, I would never. I'm a, remember, we discussed this. I'm a goody goody. I would never kill anyone. Okay. Well, for the record, I would. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody ever accused you of being a goody goody. <laughs> I don't know. I just you're my fugitive brother. <laughs> and no, if you kill me, I will not harbor you. I don't know. I feel like you're not that important. <laughs> In the grand scheme of life, <laughs> you're not as important to me as a big pile of cash. You would want me to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will say on this podcast, on the record, I do not want you to. So there's that. Just in case. Okay. They were like, she would have wanted me to. I don't. So. It's not like we can split the money if you kill me. That's now we can come true. up with some elaborate scheme where some monk scheme I act like I'm you, dead. Yeah. Or, 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 or. That's kind of like the leper, right? We do that, that but then I cut you out of it and then I really kill you. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, Candace, our final thing of me hosting Junk Time is we have a viewer's voice this week. All right. From your girl, our girl, everybody's girl, Lindsay Chambers. So, she says, It's gotta be my favorite episode of the series, possibly aside only from the series finale two-parter. Eric Stonetree is an amazing guest star in this episode, and I love the interactions between Monk and Boom Boom. The sheriff character in the episode is amazing too. The fact that he asked Monk to take a look at the body because he wants the woman's murder to be done right was always so heartwarming to me. And overall, he's such a sweet, likable character. The whole joke about Monk being an alien is hilarious, and my favorite scene has to be when Monk repeatedly goes through the process of getting out of bed over and over as he sees more alien enthusiasts outside his window. 
Overall, it's such a funny top tier monk episode, and I love it so much. Aw, that's so good that that was her favorite episode. That's I wonder how many people feel the same way. I it's, don't know how I feel about this. Yeah, we'll see, just, we'll we'll see. Oh, and also, Lindsay, you are weird for not liking ketchup and mustard. I just had to throw that in there. Wait, she said that? <laughs> yes, because we asked how the condiments. Yes, and most people liked relish, like oh. straight up relish on their hot dog, like. Y'all are not from Texas, That's so y'all. Gross. Y'all ain't from Texas, y'all. Y'all's is not from Texas. <laughs> I do reckon y'all ain't from Texas no more. Okay, let's move on to plot holes. All right, all right. <laughs> Does that mean you don't anything? have any? Oh, oh no, no, no! I have like three. Oh, okay, cool. Well, I, I, I was waiting for you to say something. What, where don't you we usually go? Plot the holes? Where you. I don't know. This is my first time on the show. I don't usually say that. You do? Yeah, usually you say like plus nothing because there's no plus anything. No, you, say something you go. Something weird and random. You go plot hole. Or I, I say plot holes. Or we, we say plot. Okay, never mind. This is stupid. <laughs> I, no, I'm pretty sure I say how many plot holes do you have? I'm pretty sure that's the first thing I say. We go plot holes and you go, welcome back to my first time on the show. I do not where, say that. No, where. Where we get real into like the nitty gritty or something like that. I don't, I don't know. You say stuff like you're that. just making that up. Okay. No, I swear to God, you say that stuff. I swear. Check the tapes. <laughs> Check the tapes. Oh, I have exactly three plot holes. How many do you have? Um, I have a few, but a lot of mine are plot holes. So let me just let's oh. let's spout off some weird stuff. Okay, so I thought this these storylines in particular were weird. The weekend getaway. I know I said I liked it, but I thought it was just kind of random mm-hmm. that they went on a trip like that. And then also when Natalie says they, they're not going to be back for the training seminar, and she told the captain that, I was like, that was definitely just a reason for her to call the captain and, like, get him on the show. Mm-hmm. But that's super weird to say. Like, oh, I'm sorry, Captain, we're not going to be back for that training seminar. And he's like, oh, that's okay. It's like, yeah, because when? You know what I mean? It wasn't yeah. like, oh, we're gonna we're not going to be back for that big case. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It's like because we have our own case here, so we couldn't very well like miss a murder. So I saw it was not necessarily a plot hole, but just really weird storylines they threw in there. Yeah. So um, also the victim's name is Marge. Oh yeah. That was weird. This one is a plot hole. We have seen Monk's belly button. We have. I was thinking about that because there's no way we haven't. That's I. I just was gonna ask you after the show. Oh okay. If we ever haven't. Because I forgot to ask you in likes. But yeah. Have, what episode? Okay, for sure we saw in Mr. Monk Takes His Medicine. Remember, he's in the swimming pool. And he has his shirt off. And the monk, uh, He's the monk. Yeah, he's the monk, yeah. And he's shooting he's all the people the with the water guns. And they're like, stop it. And then he's all sad and everything. Yeah. So we definitely saw it then. We also... But, I believe, but was Natalie there? Oh, Sharona. This no? is a Sharona episode, yeah. Sharona's last episode. So that is a really plot hole. I mean, we've seen it, but Natalie hasn't. Oh, that's true. Oh, that's true. I mean, that's it debunks the no. fact that they're trying to hit at Monk being an alien. But Yeah, 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 yeah. Because we've seen it, but Natalie hasn't. Interesting. Good catch, Noah. Because mm-hmm. the other one I was going to say was a Sharona one also. Because in Mr. Monk is fired, I believe when he gets his job back, he does a little jig and he kind of pulls his shirt up. And she's oh, like, yeah. what are you doing? And she's like, I'm doing a jig. And she's like, that's not a jig. That's Sharona, though. So that's a good catch. Oh. But if you were a fan out there and you thought, does he have a belly button? He does. So Wow. So that's a good deal. Yeah. And it's an innie. Because we know that. Oh. Yeah. It is an Audi. An Audi. An Audi. Is in the car. Yeah. No. It's, <laughs> it's an innie. <laughs> um, my first plot hole is the UFO was very extra. Also... If model UFOs really existed, I would know about it. Model UFOs don't exist. How do you know? Because they don't. Would you Google it? No. They have to exist. Mm-mm, mm-mm. There's something for everything. You could probably buy one on Amazon right now. I'd be surprised if you couldn't. I'd be very surprised if you couldn't buy. Yeah, the people are calling this a model right here. Area 51 UFO. $32.95. The... There's no way it flies, though. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't fly. I bet you. Could I don't still know find if they it. if they could make a flying saucer, 
saucer <laughs> and I would know about it. I would have one by now. I would have about three by now and I would be currently messing with it right now. Okay, well, I know what I'm getting for Christmas because I just saw one for $32.95, huh? Okay, well, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be like this and not going to fly. Okay, we'll see. Candace, our technology is not alien level yet. I thought they were dumber than us. Not alien TV level yet. Oh, okay. Gotcha. The okay. doy. Okay, this is another, uh, not callback, but everything always happens on Vinton Street in Monk. Like, you'll notice, like, oh, Vinton Street, Vinton Street. Like, all the crimes happen on Vinton. But the name of the town was Vintonville, too. Wait, like, they did it again. Like, they just added Vinton. And the, That's probably, like, a funny thing they do or something. In the town. Yeah. Well, the creator, Andy Breckman, he says that, like, he was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just, like, lack of imagination. Like, everything's just, it was just easier than coming up with, like, names for stuff. <laughs> like, we just called it Oh, my it God. Vin- yeah. And I was like, really? Vintonville? <laughs> Vinton Town. Vinton City. Vintonville. Yeah. That's bad. There's a Bittenville. Isn't there Arkansas? Bittenville? It sounded like that, but I knew it was Vinton because they use wow. Vinton Street for everything. Yeah. Vintonville? Fayetteville. Bittenville. Oh, I don't That's know. That's where Walmart is. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, okay. It is. Okay. Um, Isn't it unidentified foreign object, not unidentified flying object? Oh. I thought it was flying object, but that actually does up. sound kind of right. Unidentified flying object. What? Does UFO stand for? Dang it, it's flying. <laughs> Crap. That, that makes uh, it doesn't make sense though. Okay, <laughs> never mind. <clears throat> okay, I have another one that's not a plot hole, but I mean you you could call it a plot hole, I guess, if you wanted to. But it's actually a location uh it's actually a location catch. So I noticed it right off the bat. Mm-hmm. It, whenever the, um, dang it, I, I forgot to get a timestamp for you guys. Sorry. But it's at the very end where they're at Kyle Larkin's house. Well, when they all walk outside to the internet people, they go on the, like on the wraparound porch. Well, that's the same house. Like the interior and the exterior is the same house as Mr. Monk gets married. So I have some screenshots here. So this is, this is Kyle Larkin. Mm-hmm. And that's Sharona. Holy crap. It's a little different. The house Wait, is... Wait, how'd you notice that? Because I remember the steps that they were on at the outside of the the marriage counseling place. The inside they... of it looks the same. It has like stained glass and stuff. And then the outside, those steps are pretty like recognizable. Because when Randy, like Randy's mom goes home with the sheriff and then Sharona's like, wow, you can't even get your mother to go home with you. It's a pretty good line. <laughs> and she walks by him and the, there's the steps. So, and the interiors match too. This like stained glass yeah. is in that episode too. Yep. Holy so, crap. Yep. I caught it. That you did good, catch it. That's a, a really, really good one. Okay. Do you have any more plots? I do have one more. Okay. The weird phone that the guy used to film the UFO. Oh, yeah. What the heck was that thing? What was it that? was like a weird like camera that like poked out of his flip phone. It was I mean, they could have just weird. used the regular flip phone now. Back in the day, uh, back in the prehistoric ages, before everything was lit and cracked. Honestly, I'm not kitchen. sure. In 2009, if my flip phone had a decent enough camera to catch that, but it's possible. It's possible. What do you mean decent <laughs> enough camera? You don't understand how bad the cameras were. <laughs> like, really? you could barely, like, tell what things were. Like, you you didn't go around, like, taking pictures of people or things or anything. It was, like, not... It was not it. Really? Yeah, no. So, my last two things are actually plot holes. Okay, so Natalie's junk car, we discussed... Her Nat- what car? Her, her junky car. Oh, yeah. Like, she literally has a brand new, like, Lexus nissan like all these random yeah, cars that are super nice and julie's car looks like that like i i'm all for teaching your kid values and that is great but it just in the plot hole of things like how is natalie getting a new car 
and why would she be okay with Julie driving that around? And if our plot hole is, if our plot hole is filled by the fact that her parents help her with things, you know they would buy Julie yeah a nicer car. I feel like that's got to be a plot hole. I agree. Like again, it makes sense that if it's in the if it's in the storyline of Natalie never has enough money, of course her 17-year-old daughter isn't going to have enough money to buy a good car, but if Natalie's always having these brand new cars, it seems like a big stretch that her that Julie's car would be that bad. So. Yeah. I hear what you're saying. I feel like I feel like those are two different storylines. Either they don't have money or they do have money and the cars contradict that. So, and then my last one is, so remember I said the quote earlier where Monk is like, I'm not of your planet. I'm not human. And then at the end, he literally all, he just leaves off by saying, I'm here to do alien things to everyone. And he has his hands up and everyone's smiling and it's funny, whatever. Okay. Mm -hmm. But in all like seriousness, like if that was legit, what he just admitted he was an alien those internet people wouldn't have like spread it to news sources and stuff uh, and like try to capture him <laughs> and like or arrest him or something like yeah. I'm I'm an alien and I'm coming here to do alien things to you and like they wouldn't have just let that go you know what I mean like it was yeah. a funny ending but just doesn't make any sense with the continuity of like mm -hmm. the storyline <laughs> like okay let's move on to <laughs> How crazy was Monk this episode? Plus crazy moments. Okay, out of ten, what? Out of ten, boom booms. <laughs> <laughs> I put out of ten straight bendy straws. Because <laughs> they're bendy straws, but Natalie, gotta be straight. <laughs> okay, crazy moments. He didn't say a word all weekend at Natalie's event. Of course. Rearranging spoons, sweeping up crumbs. She, she says he didn't even smile. He's like, I smiled. You were wincing. That's how I smile. <laughs> he retries waking up. He'd remember being probed. It's like, what if you were probed? I'd remember. What if they did a full lobotomy? I'd remember. <laughs> the internet people. He tells them to fan out. Fan out. Way, way out. <laughs> Natalie, show them your belly button. Never. When they're in the desert and Monk is worried about what's like going to happen to them. Are they going to die? And he's talking about the face eating coyotes and then the things that eat the face eating coyotes and then the things <laughs> are the things that eat the face eating coyotes. Um, and then, of course, what I talked about, the any ideas? No, no, Natalie, no ideas. <laughs> he's so exhausted in the desert after 30 steps. He washes his hands with a canteen water. He's like dying of heat. And he's like, oh God. And he unbuttons his top button. And then he, a couple seconds later, he's like, okay. And then buttons it back up. <laughs> He'll be the empathetic detective. <laughs> like, please, just, I need people. Dirt, you win. <laughs> you win. Are you happy? <laughs> Whenever he finds the people, he's like, just any people, please, just any people. And he sees the internet people. He's like, oh, not these people. <laughs> and then, of course, when he's in the bed and he's being super dramatic and he, he flossed for three straight hours. <laughs> I guess because he, is that supposed to be because he has sand in his teeth or something? I think so. I don't know. Why would you floss for three hours? I don't know. And then, of course, he was. My favorite thing about that is when the cap, the sheriff who got shot is right next to him and he's like acting like he like. <laughs> yes. Yep, that's exactly <laughs> another reason to love the sheriff. And then, of course, finally, he wants his bendy straw straight. That was a lot. That was a lot. Okay, out of ten boom booms, what are you going with? I'm going with, like, a like a strong seven. Yeah. I feel like it was a very seven-type episode. He's not too, 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 too crazy, but he also could have just, like, shown them his belly button. <laughs> I don't, I don't get what the deal with that was. Yeah. But, but yeah. Out of 10 straight bendy straws, I gave him a 7 too. Oh, wow. Yeah. One the same boat. Yep. And it's out of here. That was, that was a good... How crazy... That was very efficient. It was efficient. Say. <laughs> cool. 
rate this episode. Okay, I read the scene up, so you can go first. Rogue, rogue, rogue. <clears throat> I just, I don't, I'm not in love with this one. I'll be honest. I, it was, like you said, in dislikes, slow, boring. It just wasn't the best, like, at all, by any means. I'm sorry, Lindsay, but I'm going to have to go with the 7 out of 10. Mm-hmm. Also not my favorite episode, for sure. I feel bad because Lindsay loves this episode. No, It's her favorite, but we don't have the same taste in episodes as Lindsay. It's so true. it makes perfect sense that we mm-hmm. both dislike this one. But there were some funny lines, but not enough to like be like that was so hilarious mm-hmm. and that makes it better it just didn't it was it was slow and boring um not m- there wasn't much of this episode not not a great crime or anything mm-hmm. um this definitely is at the bottom of the rankings for me i'm going with a 10.625 wow i was going near a six but Lindsay liking it alone gave me one point. I, I, I don't know. Oh, well, see, and that's the thing, too, is that, again, it's interesting because I... I, I, rated, I rated Underwater a 6.5. But, again, I can't compare it to that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, it's not there. I'd say I, it's better than Underwater. I uh, Yeah, exactly. But yeah. I rated it less than. But, again, I did the same thing for, like, Buys a House. I did that. For the um, Mr. Monk's favorite show, mm-hmm. I, I I think didn't I ended up like rating them the same, even though I liked One Mr. Monk's better. favorite show better. But again, because I can't I can't I have to s- stop thinking about last season. Mm-hmm. Like I you know I I use it as a tool, but I can't be like oh it's better than that because it doesn't really matter at this point. Yeah, what last season was I use the I use it for a gauge, but not like you know. You guys know what I mean. So I'm going with a 6.25. Out of 10. What did we rate the first episode? Lower than that. We rated like fives, I think, right? The first one? Yeah. I rated like a 7.5. Oh, I, well, I yeah. like that one. Oh, yeah, you did. Yeah. Like that one. I, th- I think that episode's above average to me. I think it's a smidge above average. I think this one's below average. And I think we, I think in the dislike section, we hit it very well in the head that. It was, the crime was weak, and then the UFO, they didn't lean into it enough. It's like they obviously didn't care as much about the crime as they did the whole UFO aspect of the show, like Monk being an alien, but they didn't lean into it enough Mm -hmm. to make it more alien. It was about Monk being an alien. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. That was a tough one. I feel like it was was a well-intentioned adventure, but it was a miss. So. I agree. There just isn't much to say yeah. about it. No, that's what... And honestly, when I first took my notes, I had written down two likes. And I had to go back and go like, which, you know, what did I actually... I know I liked stuff, but nothing stood out to me so much that it made me want to jot it down. Mm-hmm. And so I had to go back and write down things that I liked. It still ended up like, with like four. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, just, what, that's what happened with me. Well, it was a bunch of quotes. Yeah. So... But there wasn't there wasn't a lot of dislikes either. Yeah, it was. It, it there was wasn't a lot to say. Yeah. yeah, it was lacking things. Yeah, so there was nothing stand out yeah. about it. Thank you for tuning into this episode. I hope that you're not with Lindsay on this one. I know. <laughs> or you or you guys are going. What is wrong with them? No. Why do they hate all my favorite episodes? <laughs> and we're like we have the microphone so we i just what we say goes (laughs) i just don't understand how people like we're i i I don't understand how our like field of views can be so different about things which is so crazy we both like monk but there's like two different sides of monk it's weird it is so weird but it's funny because that's what makes it so cool is because it's not like there's definitive like really great episodes and really crappy episodes yeah because someone's like oh you know it's my favorite episode i love the summer rain yeah you're like, and you're what? like what <laughs> <laughs> exactly so still accepting applications for season eight rankings as well por favor 
please. Also, leave us a voicemail. We haven't gotten one of those in a while. Oh my god, we haven't got a voicemail in like 80 years. I know. It's because like when I push people to do it, they're like, I could do that. But I usually just, I'm, I'm like, you don't have to. But we want you to, mm-hmm. so. Leave a just, voicemail. Just, just to say hi. Just to say how we've strongly impacted your life on an everyday <laughs> basis. <I'm> just <laughs> if leave a voicemail about <laughs> season eight, episode eight. And or nine or and or seven. I don't know. I'm too bad at math for this. What 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 episode? By the time this yeah, is probably. coming out. Yeah, probably seven, eight. Seven, eight, nine, whichever. It doesn't matter. We don't care. Anything. Or just calls to say hi. Yeah. Be like Because then we'll say hi to you because then you'll be on our show. Just so. call it, voicemail, hi, and then leave. Don't Don't say something. (laughs) Leave your name. Say say the secret passcode is math related to science and we'll let you in. No, just call 323-366-0477 and say whatever you want. No, say your name. Say, hi, I'm Jennifer Lawrence. Wait, that's a real one. (laughs) (laughs) I'm Jennifer, not Lawrence, and... Math is math related to science. You just say is math related to science, and if you say anything other than that, if you if you like use the wrong inflection, like is math related to science, we're blocking you. <laughs> You're no longer allowed to listen to the podcast. They're like math and science, first come first serve. <laughs> I wish there were ten of them. <laughs> that was a reference to Monk, by the way. What episode? Uh, Mr. Monk and the Three Julies. Yeah. Oh my gosh! You get that. You're too oh good. Oh my at this. gosh! Why That's didn't we episode. mention that to Jason? Is, that was a good performance. <laughs> that was such a good performance. First come, I first serve. <laughs> I wish there were ten of them. <laughs> All right, we'll see you for episode four of season eight. We're almost a quarter of the way done already. Yikes! Oh my gosh! That's sad. That's so sad. All right, guys. See you next week. Beep. <laughs> Please leave your message after the beep. Hey guys, thanks for listening to the Junk Monk Podcast. We'd love to hear from you, so please give us a five-star review wherever you listen to podcasts. Also, follow us at Junk Monk Podcast on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. If you want to know more about Candice, she's at Hardens and Hardhats on Instagram. And if you want to know more about me, Noah L., subscribe to my vlog, Noah Hernandez, on YouTube. Also, you can leave us a voicemail at 323-366-0477 with your questions, comments, or just to show us some love. Don't forget to catch up on Monk with Amazon Prime Video, and of course, subscribe to our show. You'll thank me later.